Welcome to Craft School. In this episode, I'm going to show you guys some of my favorite tips and tricks when I'm making flowers and botanicals with crepe paper. Now, double sided crepe paper is one of our favorite types because it is so smooth and elegant and it has a body weight to it so that it holds shape really well. Now, we have six different packs, which means we have 12 colors of double sided crepe paper, but honestly, sometimes we'll come across a project that we just don't have the right color. So I'm going to show you guys how to make your own DIY double sided crepe paper using two of the extra fine papers. We're going to make this green and copper two sided crepe paper and then we'll use this to make these beautiful magnolia leaves and I'll show you some tips on doing that as well. To make your double sided crepe paper you will need an ironing board, an iron, and some scissors. I also have an ironing cloth here and that is if you feel a little bit uncomfortable putting your iron onto the crepe paper you might want to start here. I've done it a bazillion times so I'm not going to need it. For materials I have two different colors of extra fine crepe paper and I have my copper and my cypress green. And then to bond these together this is a fusible bonding web and the other name for it is stitch witchery that's the brand name you can find this at your fabric store because we use this for fabric for felt all kinds of craft materials and it's in the section where you'll find any sort of interfacing or uh, fill for your quilts this should be there too and you can get it by the yard i'll lay my first crepe paper out and i'm going to do face down so the shiny side of the copper is towards the ironing board and then I've cut a piece of this interfacing and we want to make for sure that you do not have anything coming off the edge of the crepe paper because that will just stick to your ironing board so I'm going to go ahead and cut that off and when you're crafting you'll just remember that some of the edges you'll need to cut around that because that will not be bonded and my second piece will go right on top. And this is where you might want to use your ironing mat if you don't feel 100% comfortable if you want to test it first. I've set my iron on the hottest heat and I will tell you the most beautiful thing about this extra fine crepe paper is you can iron it and it will not compress or flatten where if you try to use the floristic it actually will crush it. So you can only do this with the extra fine. And this will take a few minutes because you really want this to heat up and fuse. I don't want to leave my iron in one place for too long because you don't want to burn the paper. Also, make sure that you're not using any water or steam because if you do that, it will make the paper lose its folds. I'm going to turn it over. Look how beautiful this looks. Another tip that you guys might want to know is if you ever have crepe paper that's been crushed or wrinkled or it has creases in it, if it's single sided or double sided, you can iron it and flatten it out and it works really well. Now I'm going to show you how to take this beautiful crepe paper that we just created and make these magnolia leaves. And these are small ones. You can also make them large. We have a pattern for that. To make these magnolia leaves, you will need scissors, wire cutters, tacky glue, brown floral tape, 26 gauge wire, and this is actually covered with paper. We have a link for you below. I've printed my pattern, and then I have my double-sided crepe paper. So in the pattern, we have three different size leaves, and I've already made the small leaves, so I'm gonna do the largest. Oftentimes, magnolia leaves are very big, and you could even go larger than this if you wanted to. I'm going to cut out my pattern. I don't need to cut all the way around it. Just cut it in half. And then we're going to note that the grain line is at an angle. So this, this is a little bit wide. I'm going to cut the crepe paper down to fit. So for these leaves, we're going to have one color on one side. Oftentimes, when I do these double-sided leaves, I'll flip it over and have you know one color on one half of the leaf and then the other color on the other half, but this time we want the same. So let's see, we've cut that. Let's cut it at an angle. And then to make it simpler, we'll do two leaves at a time. 
I'll just flip that around and then you can cut two leaves. Two halves of a leaf that is. But this will be for two different leaves and I'll show you why. Okay, we have that. And then the other piece, we're actually gonna go the opposite way. Cut my angle first. And then flip that piece around. So here we have two leaves and it was easy because I cut one but in stacks so that makes your process go a lot faster. So you'll just want to make for sure that your V goes upward because if you had it flipped and it went this way this isn't the natural way that leaves form. If you by any chance cut it upside down you could actually use the leaf the other way because leaves will be shaped you know bigger on the top, small on the bottom or vice versa. So here's my next trick. I have these little tiny wires and I'm going to go ahead and cut it in half just so it's easier to handle. So rather than using hot glue, which I usually use hot glue, I want these leaves to be very movable and bendable and this type of glue works better. So what I'm going to do is just thread that right into my glue and I'll get a nice bead. Actually I bent it. I think I hit something inside the bottle. That's all right, this is easy to clean up. So I'm gonna go ahead and straighten it and I'll try that one more time. Stick that right inside the bottle. Don't push it down too far because then you'll bend your wire like I just did. And then you have a perfect bead of glue. And I'll place that on the edge. And notice I'm not going all the way to the tip and then quickly just put the other piece right on top and I have very little overlap just enough overlap to cover up the wire and I'll get this glue off my fingers luckily this glue will dry clear and you can't really see it so that's helpful too and then I'll press this down so I'm almost crushing the crepe paper onto the wire flip that over to make sure none of your wire is showing if so you can adjust it and then let that dry. Another thing you'll want to do is make sure your tips are lined up. Sometimes you know you'll do an overlap and they're not quite pointed but that's easy enough to fix. Just use your scissors and one side will have not a perfect point but the other side will so you kind of decide which of the sides of leaves you'll show the most. In this case I think the green will be so I'm going to adjust that and then I'll let that dry and do the other leaf. Of course, if your glue is all the way down to the bottom, this won't work. So you have to use a new glue package so that you know it's completely full. So the reason why I'm leaving the tip a little bit without the wire is so that I can trim it in the end without hurting my scissors. The other nice thing about this type of glue is that it does dry slower, so you have more time to adjust. All right, so there we have two leaves. I'll trim that tip. And once this is dry, all you'll need to do is give it a little bit of shape by maybe pulling the edge a bit, and then you can use the wire to move it down like this. You don't want it to be too flat because that doesn't look as real. You can also cut out little bug bites if you want to. You know how bugs will nibble on the edge of leaves? That makes it look very realistic. This one I'm going to stretch out just a little bit more. Then I'm going to take my brown floral tape here. I just need a small piece. 
and I'll wrap the top of the wire right underneath the leaf. And you'll notice that we are going to be switching and using more of this paper covered wire in the future because it just works well. It glues well, the floral tape works better on it. So we're finding little tips and tricks that we're passing on to you guys. And this is one of them, having that new type of uh, wire. All right, so I just need a, a couple inches on that and I'll show you why. Make sure all my glue's off. Do the same to the other one. I'm using brown floral tape because this is to replicate a twig and those are usually brown. Sometimes they're green, but in this case we're going to make them brown. Then what we're going to do is we're going to attach leaves together. This wire is a little bit short, so I'm going to pull in another wire. As you're building your branches, you'll add more and more wire so that by the time you get to the end of your stem, you actually have quite a bit of wire and it'll make it pretty thick. So I'm just gonna place another one right in there. And then you can see I have one is a bit longer than the other. And if at this point you want to use thicker wire than 26, you can. You can go to a 20 or even an 18. And then this is how you continue to build your branches. You can add more leaves as you go. Until you've created something like this. So this flower branch was actually made from the double-sided crepe paper which was created in Germany. And the company that we work with that manufactures our crepe paper, they're the only ones that do this double-sided crepe paper. So if you see it out there in different colorways that we don't sell, it's still the same factory and it's beautiful. And then this is our own DIY double-sided. And one of the things that we have noticed is that that which is created in Germany is a little bit stiffer and it has a nice weight to it where sometimes this can be a bit lighter. But I'm telling you, this is just a really great option if we don't have the right color for you for your project that you can make it look how simple it was to make. And it just broadens the opportunity for you to create these beautiful bouquets. We're discovering new tips and tricks on how to use crepe paper every day, and we love to share them with you guys. So if you like this video and want more, make sure that you subscribe using the button below.